All right, folks, we're getting started to do a big quote unquote welding project. We're going to make a sheep tilt table. This item here pivots on this bolt and opens up. A sheep walks in, there's gates on each side. The chain connects these two pieces here, clamping the sheep in. You rotate it up, pivoting on this pin. So there's three parts that we're going to make the front tilt frame, the rear tilt frame, and the base. We have steel, and steel, and we're gonna be making this out of inch square tubing, 095 thickness, and inch and a half square tubing, 0.12 thickness. We've already used a silver Sharpie to mark the lengths that we've determined for this cut list which are shown here and I will update that if anything changes throughout the build. Uh, we also wipe down the new steel with isopropyl alcohol to get the majority of the black residue off. Um, I may continue to work on that. Uh, the next thing we're working on we have my horizontal bandsaw set up and I'll be using a couple stands um, for this little project here to make cuts. And uh, so our first cut will be on this piece. Uh, this currently marks 45 inches. We actually need it to be 47. So I will update that and we will get to cutting. That's fun. All the pieces have now been cut. We have our stoppers so we don't rotate beyond 90. You'll see more about that later. We have our 23 inchers. We have a 45 incher, 47 incher. We have 236. These are our base feet. We've got uh, 24 and 10. These will form part of the forward tilt table. We've got some 12 inchers. Uh, these are the pivots. We'll be drilling through those. And then we've got 848s. All the cutting was done on the bandsaw. The next step is to drill holes. We'll be drilling holes for quarter 20 clearance holes. The size is drill H, which is 0.2666 in inches, and we will show that next. The time has now come to drill holes in many of the pieces for the hinges and rotating parts. I've already drilled the first hole here, and I'll describe the process for the next pieces that we will be drilling. So, on my drill press, we're going to be cutting some mild steel at roughly one quarter inch. We're actually doing size H, which is 0.266. Suggests a speed of 870 to 1440. And using the chart on my drill press, I've set up the speed for that. In general, if you don't have a drill press like this, using a slower speed is always better. It keeps the temperatures on the drill bit down and allows the tool to bite much better. I have my drill bit checked up and I've got some cutting oil here. You can use whatever you'd like. Um, just for fun and for fanciness, I have a level on my piece and I actually have the piece clamped in my drill press. Now this could probably be done for a project like this with a hand drill, uh, but in this case I'm using the tool that I have and we'll go from there. So we'll turn it on, see how she does. All right, the next step is to brush off the chips. So we'll pull this off, brush, brush, flip it over. And we've got a burr here, so we're going to take this over to the countersink bit on a drill that I have, and we'll get that cleaned up. All right, with the countersink queued up, we'll get that on there. And do some deburring on both sides. 
and that's nice and smooth. It looks like this still needs a little bit of work, so we'll go, and that's a job done. Shake out the bits. For making the holes, I thought I'd show what I'm doing. I have my calipers set to half an inch, roughly, and I'm making a slight scribe mark in each direction, as the drawing specifies. And then I have a hole punch that we press and it punches a hole. So according to the drawing, we need one hole at half an inch by half an inch, 0.266 through. And then we need a second hole at eight and a half inches time. So the next action we're doing is cutting it this way. And then we'll be drilling holes. This will be the inside side and this outside will form where the hinge is. And I think that'll work great. If that doesn't work, I have this other rusty plate. It's a bit thicker and bigger, um, and that will be plan B. So that is that. Um, if you need to buy steel, you can buy these plates on Amazon, um, roughly $25. But ask around. You might find somebody that has something that you can use. Beginning welding and tacking. All right, here we got the frame welded up. We have our two 36 inch pieces on the bottom. We have our 24 inches pieces for the vertical. And then we've got our horizontal stabilizer bar. And we've got our welds. And we've got all the way around. Our hole here is in the right spot and it seems to be fairly consistent to this side. So the next step is to start welding up the frame. All the way around, we had a butt weld here and over there, and it's solid as all get out. So now onto the rear tilt, which will use up those parts and these parts. As part of the process, we're making a handle in my little forge. And the finished handle. We're now installing the brackets at 28 inches from the top of the frame. We've made marks with a silver sharpie and I'm using my triangle magnets to space it approximately in the middle of the beam, which is what the design has. This could be adjusted to have it flush on the ground, but we're going to go with what the design has even if it's more complex, just as a test of my skills. And uh, we'll get her tacked in there. All right, we got some paint on this thing. New Holland Blue. Here's with the primer. Diamond plate looking good. And here's the front rail. Here's the handle that we blacksmithed earlier. We did have to grind. This is completely optional. You don't have to blacksmith, you can buy a handle. We'll be using these clips, the hinges, and they fit perfectly in those holes that we drilled earlier. Thank <laughs> you. 